LSU's going to score. Yes. A bunch. So we'll talk about that in a bit. The key for me is can LSU get stops defensively against the Clemson off- offense? So let's start there and start with what you know. How do LSU's DBs match up against Clemson's wide receivers? Well, I, I think we match up well. I don't. What, what, what doesn't scare me when LSU is playing is wide receivers that do tall people things. Right? And so tall people do tall things. And so when you watch the wide receivers of Clemson, one, they're all pros. And not, I, don't, I don't mean like all pro team. Those guys are all, all of them are NFL professionals. players. They're NFL it. players. They're long. They're tall. They can run. But those are the type of defensive backs we recruit. I think obviously it'll still be the same type of deal as we've seen in, in weeks before where they try to attack us inside. C.D. Lamb, you and I text mm-hmm. during the game, and we talked about it before the game. I was like, I don't know if they're going to sit him outside on the corner all game and try to win out there. I think they'll move him inside, try to get the matchup with Kerry Vincent. Or and get Stevens, the, yeah. You're very right about that. Or get that. the matchup yep. with Jacob. Like I, just, I, I feel like that's where people think they can win. On one side, you have Christian Fulton, who's extremely good, and obviously Derek Stingley, who's an All-American. And so I think we fare well in that matchup. If you can go back to Ohio State Clemson and see really the dominance Jeffrey Okuda played with, who will be the number one corner drafted in his draft from Ohio State. But he dominated in that in those matchups. Obviously, they lose their star wide receiver to injury in the first quarter. And so it was a little different. But then go back to when Sean Wade of Ohio State gets the helmet-to-helmet targeting penalty against Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And then you see right away they started attacking inside. And so I think they look at matchups, and they try to find places where they have matchups. And so outside, I believe we match up well. I don't think they're explosive as a passing unit. That's not the way they want to play football. They're Mm -hmm. a a balanced attack. And so for, for, for me, it won't necessarily be how we match up outside. It'll be how we match up in between the numbers, which I think is always a big key for us. And even bigger is how we stop Travis ATN. If you go back to the semifinal game, the bigger plays were made by Travis ATN and Trevor Lawrence's legs. That was where there was trouble. That was where they started to come back against Ohio State. There were plays in that game where Travis ATN looked like the best player on the field. And so if you go back to, I think, where we struggle – is as good as Phillips and Queen have been at linebacker, they haven't tackled extremely well. And if you look at the first touchdown scored by Clemson, it was a Travis, uh, Travis Etienne outside run where he pushes the ball to the sideline, cuts back, breaks a tackle, gets into the end zone, and, and now the game is started. And then you see, you know, then there's also the long run <coughs> by Trevor Lawrence. And so I think... This game is going to be won inside the numbers. The thing you have to worry about if you're um, Derek Stingley and Christian Fulton is the deep ball. Uh, we saw Alabama get exploited last year in the championship, which is why everybody had Trevor Lawrence as the runaway favorite for the Heisman mm-hmm. coming into this season because Ross and those guys were turning around, making plays, spinning, catching one-hand balls, and doing different things. And so I think those 50-50 balls will be a thing. More so with Christian Fulton because he's had some trouble locating the ball in earlier games this season. So I believe they'll try him that way. Maybe give Derek some different type of routes on the outside. But I think we match up well with this team. I'm not scared of of who they are offensively. But this team will score in between 24 and 31 points for sure. They may score more. Uh, we're going to have to put points on the board. Uh how big of a deal is it that Mike Divinity's back? I think it's a big deal for rush packaging. If you look at the way that his position or his role on the team progressed after being out or suspended or whatever it it was, it was the starting Mike linebacker at first. And then when he comes back, Caleb Von Chassel is injured, so he kind of moves to that rush end linebacker position. And then once Caleb Vaughn's back, it's more in a rush package. How will we use him to get to the passer? And I think that's the way we'll see him this game is, you know, Dave Aranda finding ways to use him in the game that makes him effective. But also you can't expect him to play 40 plays after mm-hmm. not playing for six weeks. How long does that take to get back to where you feel? Um, I think it, it, it takes a while. Even, even, though, even though he's been practicing? Yeah, it, it'll, it, it'll take a while if you have to play a whole game. 
Okay. It'll be nothing to play in packages, right? Once once you get in packages, it's like playing the first game of the season in college football because you don't have preseason right. games. So it's, okay, I'm jumping right in. I'm starting to do some things. But if you ask a guy to play 80 plays after training camp, everybody struggles. Mm-hmm. And so he can't be in that position and, too, on that stage, right? That's, Adrenaline. That, that stage changes things. You know, I heard the Star Spangled Banner a million times playing football. I only cried twice. And that was two Super Bowls. Super Bowls. Makes sense. You know, you're, you, you're only <laughs> on, the, on the second snap in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, you're like. <laughs> that adrenaline dump comes. Yeah, when, you know. when do you, so when do you settle down? Do you expect these guys to have that? Yeah. yeah. You, you absolutely have it. It's, yeah. it's human nature. And if you don't have it, it's a little scary. If, if you, because you need that, you need to be on edge. Like it needs to be a little more important to you. And the bullcorn adage of it's just another game is stupid. And it's wrong and it's dumb. And it's what stupid and wrong and dumb people say. <laughs> and it's what people say who haven't been there. You know, like the guy who's doing it from the f- for the first time, you know, and he's going against somebody who's done it before. You know, like when you're in your first heavyweight fight and you're fighting Mike Tyson and he's one five and everybody's going to sleep within the first six minutes of the fight. And it's your first time you're like this is nothing new. This is just another fight. And then he punch in your nose and you can't see for right. the next six days. And you say, nah, it was a little different. Yeah. You know, like that. So when you get into that atmosphere, you know how important it is. Like you're not an alien. You're not a cyborg. Like n- there's only one Kawhi Leonard in the world. Mm-hmm. There's only one dude who actually might be oblivious to it. All the rest of us feel pressure. All the rest of us understand the moment. And so it takes some settling down. And I think that's the one thing about Clemson that's good for them, it doesn't mean you're going to win the game, right? It doesn't mean just because you've experienced it, you will play better. But it does mean you understand that part of it. 